Swads do live, everybody. How the hell are you doing? Now, guess what? It's time for our Q&A session. Uh, right, so before we get into it, though, allow me to just say real quick, there are some questions that I didn't answer here in this Q&A because they were pretty much identical to the questions that I had already answered in my last Q&A. So if you don't find your question here, uh, then it's only because it is already on the other one, so go check that one out, too, if you want to. Um, other than that, we got a lot of questions to go through, so let's just hop straight into it. The first question is from Ashisogi Tenno, who asked, Why, why do you use that fucking robo voice? <laughs> well, there is actually a legit reason why I use this voice, and I get this, um, I get that, I get that question a lot, actually. And first of all, allow me to just, allow me to just say, right? Because I get a lot of people saying, why are you, why are you using this, get yourself a mic or get off of YouTube, man. First of all, how dare you? How dare you even have the audacity to come to a YouTuber's channel, which is going quite okay, right? And try to dictate to that person how to run their damn channel. Boy, do you have any idea how many YouTubers are out there? There are so many. Go watch any other one if you don't like the robo voice. It ain't rocket science, man. <laughs> But that aside, the real reason why I actually use this so-called robo-voice is because um, I'm a shit narrator. So I tend to babble, I digress a lot, yada yada. If you guys imagine our um, verdict videos, which are on average between 3 and 6 minutes long, if I would have done any of those with my real voice, I guarantee that those videos would have been at least 20 minutes long, <laughs> right? And I don't want to do that to you guys. So um, yeah, I just suck as a narrator. And you know, reading off of a script isn't exactly my style, I'm just way better at winging it and being casual and uh, just interpret everything as I go. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons. The other reason is using this uh, so-called robo voice literally halves my workload. So I'm already investing between 40 and 60 hours of weekly hours into uh, this channel. Um, so if you were to imagine that I would go ahead and double my workload by using my real voice scripting, narrating, editing, yada yada, um, and I would double that workload, then I'd be working up to 120 hours a week. Yeah, no. <laughs> right? So the way I do it right now just helps me tremendously, and it just kind of, I don't know, it became my shtick at some point. I don't know why, it just kind of happened, and that's where we are now, so deal with it. <laughs> All right, let's hop on to the first question, not from myself. Fox with a hoodie, who is a wonderful patron, by the way. Hello, shout out to you. Um, ask the question, are you ready for that tattoo? Now, for those of you who are completely oblivious and don't watch any of these, at some point when I had about 6,000 or 7,000-ish uh, subscribers, I had to uh, open my big ass mouth and say that if this channel reaches 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year, I will have the uh, Ashisogi Tenno logo tattooed to my body. Well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so that's pretty much around the corner. And uh, yes, I am ready for that tattoo, to be honest. I, I really am. I'm even kind of looking forward to getting a tattoo. Um, so yeah, yeah, I am ready for that. Next up, Sarah. Hey, girl, by the way. Ask the question, do you have or ever had a girlfriend or boyfriend or any kind of relationship like that? Uh, yes and yes. Next question. Ukasha Nazir. <laughs> I'm sorry if I destroyed your name, by the way. What one Warframe would you choose to keep in real life? Mag. Hands down mag. Y'all already know that I do have like a top four, five list of Warframes where it's really difficult for me to make a choice between those two, but at heart, I suppose I'm a filthy mag main, so yeah, definitely mag. Hamster Geddon, yet another freaking patron. Hey man, what's going on? <laughs> how you how you doing? <laughs> Ask the question, <laughs> does pineapple belong on a pizza and how should the people who say yes be executed? <laughs> 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 
hey man, you do you and I do me, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> Prezu! What is going on, my Turkish friend? Nasılsın? <laughs> Habibi! Ask the question, Carol Prime or Clem Prime? Hmm, that's a hard one. Kind of. Because, I mean, Clem Prime... Cle come on now, Clem is kind of cool, but... Nah, I'm gonna have to go with Carol Prime. For those of you who have no idea who the hell Carol Prime is, go to YouTube and search the name Cephalon Carol. Boom. There you go. You're welcome. Next question is from Weiss. Again, <laughs> a patron. Also, this dude has a very, very, very nice voice, unlike my punk ass. But anyways, Weiss asked, Jizo, why have you not opened thyself and thy Angus to our lord and savior, Luthulu? <laughs> God damn it, Weiss. <laughs> Weiss, you know damn well you're my Luthulu. <laughs> oh my god, so silly. Next up, P. Dot Sherman asked the question. Very interesting question, by the way, my man. Anyways, this has been on my mind lately. Why do you think so many people call each other fam so often? I know it's short for family and can perhaps make two strangers feel a sense of brief closeness. However, I believe it begins to devalue the meaning of the word when it's used so frequently between those who don't know casually know each other. Well, uh, first of all, I believe that it's fundamentally rooted in uh, sociolectual um, behavioral patterns, right? So depending on your social, uh, your social environment, you will tend to use such words as fam for a substitute for friend or bud or homes or dog, or whatever, you know, all that shit. I don't think that it necessarily devalues the word at all, because what, what is important is not the word that is being spoken, but much more the person speaking the word. So, like, for example, when I say fam, then, sure, in a sense, I don't mean you're my actual family, as in we're blood-related, naturally, but I mean as in we are close. I am close to you guys. You are like my family. At least that's why I use it. So like I said, I wouldn't get too hung up on the word itself. I would very much look at who's saying it, in which context and why. You know my reason, so there you have it. Let's see here. Uh, how do you feel about your actual family? Has using hearing this slang affected the way you think of them? Have you noticed it in others? Uh, I have noticed it in others that people love to use these words, like I said, uh, on a whim with no meaning behind it whatsoever, but that's not the word's fault, that is the user's fault. And how I feel about my own family, probably about the same way that everybody feels about their own family. I have no detachment towards them or anything in this relation or whatever. Um, please share your answers and thoughts. Rise uh, of the language, blah, 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 blah. And thoughts and perceptions. Okay, we did it. Okay, so there's your answer. <laughs> Thank you very much for this super, super in-depth uh, question. Now, let's hop over here to the next one. Uh, Edward Lewis asked the question, what are the best Riven mods in your opinion at the time? Um, generally, for me, the best Riven mods are those that make a weapon more fun. Specifically, a weapon that is neglected more fun. Those are the best Rivens. So, no freaking Soma Prime Riven, for example. Alright, next up. Feng <laughs> asked the question, who is the real thick Warframe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> I don't concern myself with these things. Last time I did a video about it, I asked the community. I don't, I really, I don't know. I don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Kenneth Burke asked the question, What's your favorite food and dessert? Now that's a pretty good question. My favorite food, that's kind of difficult because I like a lot of food. Um, hmm. I like lasagna a lot. Although I'm not allowed to eat that too much because it'll fuck up my physique. Uh, 
shit. I don't know. Fried chicken is amazing. I liked. I can't, I can't answer it. I can't. I like so much. I like so much different food from all kinds of cultures. I really couldn't say that one specific thing is my favorite thing. Today it might be this. Tomorrow it might be something else. Okay. And my favorite dessert. Well, as you may have just caught, I am a bit of a, a fitness freak, I guess. Uh, so dessert isn't exactly on my menu. But I think maybe if I'd have to choose one f type of dessert that I would that I would designate my favorite, it might be apple strudel. It might be apple strudel. If you haven't had apple strudel, then boy, you missed out on life. All right, cool. Next question, right? T S S. Here's another one. Can you give me a nice omelet recipe? Like for real, dude. I'm starving. Thanks in advance. Hell yeah. <laughs> Get yourself two or three eggs, depending on how much you want, how hungry you are. Get yourself a little bit of onion, not too much because it has to be uh, very, very little. Then you dice that bitch up really, really nicely. You uh, mix it up in, uh, in a bowl or something, your three eggs, all the whites, all the yellows, everything all together. So you make a scrambled egg, basically. Then you heat up your pan, put a little bit of uh, sesame oil in there, about two tablespoons, depending on the shape, maybe three, no more though. And then you go ahead and grab your egg, put in some salt and some pepper, put in whatever other greens you want. Just make sure that they're diced very, very small, like peppers, for example, will work very, very nicely. Then you get yourself some kind of cheese that melts very, very easily. You could use like a, a ricotta or whatever the damn thing is. Um, you could use a Velveeta, for example. You could use anything, really, if you wanted to. And then mix all of that up into the... Uh, into the um, into your egg, right, into your scrambled egg. And then when the fat is hot, you drizzle that in there. Just pour it in there slowly. <laughs> Not actually drizzle. Pour it in there slowly. You let it rise up for maybe about three or four minutes, depending on uh, your heat and everything. Medium high should be fine. Uh, until the bottom side is brown, then you flip it around and fry it for a very short moment, maybe a minute or so on the second side. Boom, you serve it. I highly recommend you put it on a paper towel first because that paper towel is going to soak up the fat. You can wipe it down a little bit and just let it let it rest for a moment so that it can, um, uh, so that the fat can be absorbed and you have a, a less fat on it in, as a total. And then voila, you have a fluffy ass omelet that if you grab it, it feels a little bit like sponge cake. If you grab it and rip it open, it'll actually ooze out the cheese very slightly. It's, it's, it's divine. It's absolutely divine. So there's your omelet recipe. You punk. <laughs> Alright, next up. Zeramin18. Just bear with me for a moment. Is Neja a big boy now? Yes. Next up. <laughs> it's going to be Magnus the Bear. In your opinion, what is the worst thing about Warframe? Uh, yada yada yada, power creep, something something. Uh, and I hate when DE ignores frames that need tweaking, like for example, uh, Hentai Boy and whatnot. Right, so what is the worst thing about Warframe? Um, Warframe isn't perfect, of course. Warframe is not the perfect game. And putting it in that way, like, what's the worst thing, is a little bit harsh, but, uh... I think that the... F maybe single... For me, at least. Worst thing about Warframe right now is that it seems like DE is paying more attention to what a bunch of... a bunch of raggedy noobs are singing. <laughs> Rather than listening to their... Uh, veterans of many 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 years who have been there through the ups and the downs because if anybody can judge what's going on about uh, in Warframe then it's them and not someone who just came from Call of Duty and uh, decided to play Warframe for three weeks <laughs> if that is even the case it seems that way so if we assume that that is what it is then I think that that might be the single worst thing about Warframe. Other than that, there are some other issues and we could drag this on forever, but um, yeah, I think I think it would probably be that. Next question, goddammit. SCGamer32, do you identify as a YouTuber or an attack helicopter? I identify as an attack YouTuber. <laughs> Next up, Rick Sanchez. Did you try... Did you try the Mulan Sichuan sauce back in 1998? I may have, but I do not remember if I did. <laughs> Jesus Christ, guys, come on now. 
So Sean Drake Alligato asked the question, what's your favorite primary and melee weapons? Now I did answer this already in my last Q&A like I said, however, it's still probably the Hema and um, probably still the Mayos. Now like I said, I like a lot of different weapons, so I really can't put a pin on just one particular set, uh, so it changes all the time. I really enjoy the Ligma Cannon for example as well, that I have been using a lot, and the uh, Mutilus Cernos and so on and so forth. So like I said, I can't really put a pin on one single weapon in particular because I like the diversity. Alright, Daddy Raksha, another patron. Hello, what's going on, dude? <laughs> I have two questions for you, Daddy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Number one, killer is dead. When? Very soon. Uh, number two, size of Diku. <laughs> Alright, so the size of my, you know what, is somewhere between a Planck length and the size of the observable universe. Somewhere in between that range. Uh, also more Cephalon tech support. For those of you who've never heard of Cephalon tech support, Cephalon tech support um, is a character that you will find on my streams over on Twitch. So if you pop in over there and you hear somebody saying, that is incredibly rude, then <laughs> that is Cephalon tech support. He was dubbed the, as that by the community. I personally call him Ranjit, but okay, whatever. Right, next in line. Nigon Pig. <laughs> okay. How tight are your butt cheeks? Very tight. <laughs> next up, from The Viking. Hi, you got that question in last minute, didn't you? <laughs> Okay, so let's go through all of these, shall we? Did, what? How did you get the name Ashisogi Jizo? You know that it's from an enemy. Okay, so that is a super, super, super long story, but I'm going to try to keep it very, very short. Um, as some of you may know, Bleach was one of my favorite animes way back in the day. And my favorite character is Mayuri Kurutsuchi, who has a sword. Uh, with a uh, basically a soul, a soul inside, and they can summon these souls uh, to fight for them by, by their by the by their side, right? So, anyways, this sword in particular's full name is Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo, which roughly translates into golden uh, golden leg severing or dismembering uh, Jizo, and Jizo is the name of a Buddhist deity. Now, to get into that a little bit later. Uh, the clan was originally named Ashisogi Jizo, uh, so originally after that name. The reason why is because I started looking into translations and what it actually means, naturally, him being my favorite character, uh, and what I found was so intriguing that I knew, okay, this is the name of the clan. I happen to take those kinds of things very, very seriously. So. Um, let's disregard Ashisogi, the word Ashisogi for a second, and just go straight to the, to the deity Jizo. Now this person is a, uh, well not person, but this deity is a, um, basically a, a Buddhist spirit that has two jobs. Number one, it locates and guides lost and tormented souls to the light. So much like a veteran would find noobs who don't know what the hell they're doing and you know guide them to op them right <laughs> something like that um and two it will hunt and uh, torment the wicked souls so you know like child murderers rapists and that kind of stuff um and i was so intrigued by this idea and it goes much much deeper than that and i'm sure you'll find a lot of other lore but this is uh, this just happens to be the one that i found and i was so intrigued by that because it very much represented what I wanted a clan to be in Warframe, or anything, because like I said, I take something like that very seriously when you're a clan leader or anything like that, I find that you have responsibilities and you should not just start a clan, invite 20 people and then go AFK for 30 days or forever, quit the game, uh, to me that's just reckless. But anyways, 
That's exactly the mentality behind the whole Lashisugi thing. We find people, or we don't actually find people, they kind of find us more or less, um, who are maybe new to the game or tired of toxicity, tired of life's bullshit and all of the stuff that's going on, all of the you know nonsense that life can throw at you and just want to escape it and we try to provide that. So like a safe haven. So that's a very crude and very short version. It goes a little bit deeper than that. But ultimately, it's all about camaraderie, friendship, being together, and forgetting life's bullshit, right? So, Ashisogi, leg severing, dismembering is kind of brutal. That just kind of underlines that we're, you know, we're like these space ninjas or whatever, and we will not, uh, we will not bow to anything, <laughs> basically. And yeah, so Ashisogi Jizo was the name of the clan in the beginning. And my name being Cephalon Jizo, I really hated the synergy between the two. I did not like new members coming into clan, into the clan and immediately assuming that I'm the boss or something. I really don't like that position or, or being viewed as such. So I decided to change the clan name later on into Ashisogi Tenno, which was much more general, much more uh, community oriented and not... It didn't suggest just me as one person, which it never was. It, 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 it suggested what it was meant to suggest, and that is the community, the whole, okay? So that's the story behind there. Uh, next question. When did you start playing Warframe? About four and a half years ago now, I believe. Ezzy, you sneaky bastard. He slid up in there too. <laughs> Why did you steal your name from Bleach? There we go, already got that answered. Do you main any Warframe? Yes and no. I'm not exactly. I'm not a typical main of anything because I like Warframe's diversity. So I'll play with 40 different Warframes a day. <laughs> I just go with any Warframe I'm in the mood for. But if I do have to say I am a main of anything, that's probably a filthy Mag main. I love Mag. I always have. Probably will never change. And for the Cephalon, the question is: Do you like Jizo? Well, Cephalon, do you like me? I hate all of you filthy maggots equally. But you are easily the worst. Wow, rude. Anyway, that was the end of this part. Uh, we got about, I don't know, 25-ish questions done in this session. Uh, we got 50 in total, so I'm going to see you guys in the next one because I don't want to keep you for too long. I mean, come on, do, do you guys really want a 60 minute long Q&A video? I think not. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, release these in very quick succession, so you should have all of the questions answered at a very soon time. Unless, of course, Fortuna decides to, 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 to surprise us and be here a little bit earlier. But anyways, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this uh, stuff right here. I'm probably going to do more in the future. It's going to be a very long time before I do again, however. And, um, yeah, what else? I will see you guys in the next one. I guess that's it. Until then, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and peace the heck out.